Hello everybody, it's Tim again. Uh, just doing a little bit of work here on the SB200, the Heathkit amp. And if you'll notice right here, it's a new type of switch. Now the, the switches that are in these had some issues with them. Uh, I could hear a lot of arcing when I turned it on and off and I originally it was really tight when I first got this amp. I almost couldn't even turn the switch on and off half the time. So I went with a uh, soft start kit to try and save the switch a little bit and I took it apart and cleaned it. Uh, the other day I went to turn it on to run some tests on it and uh, it actually popped the breaker. I could hear some arcing and before the breaker popped I look and my voltage was down on the uh, high voltage side at about 1600 and then the breaker popped and that's one of the internal breakers. Uh, playing with the switch I found out that, uh, well I'll show you what I did. Here is the switch. I'm going to see if I can zoom into this without it uh, getting all messed up. But inside you can see the contacts on the front half. Let's see if I can point to them. They'll be up on this side up here. You can see how black they are. Here's the actual contact point and you can see how they're kind of burned up and not only are they burned up but the rocker that moves them back and forth look at that say they got pretty hot too and as you can imagine I don't think you'll find these switches new anymore there's a couple on eBay for a decent price and if you are really concerned with keeping your SP200 all original then uh, that'd be the way to go. Now looking around I found a switch that was rated at 20 amps AC and 125 volts and it looked like a pretty good replacement but when I first got this switch that's in there as you can see it, it looked a lot bigger and that was my concern. So when you look at this hole which is actually the front plate you'll see that it is actually smaller than the hole that's actually stamped in the uh, frame. This switch here was almost a perfect fit. I had to file just a little bit off of it straight on the top and bottom and I mean when I say a little bit I mean maybe a 64th of an inch maybe a 32nd of an inch but just enough so that I could get you know these are those quick install. I'll see if I can show you how they're held in. You can see these little these little gnarled surfaces right here. They had to be able to go in and I might have been able to get them in without filing it but either way if I decided or somebody else decided they wanted to restore this and go back to original that part's all hidden anyhow. So I tried it. I said let's see how it works. I put it in. Uh, the rating's perfect. The switch feels very nice and what I'm going to do now is and I just dummied it up slid the uh, faceplate back over it looks like that'll stick right through the faceplate and this is so thin that it's not going to make much of a difference because you already have areas here where it's you have it held out some with the screws uh, let me see my fingers ahead of like with that screw and that so I think it'll bolt up quite nicely and not turn out the plate at all the only thing it's missing is the gnarled edges that you'll find on the factory switch but again I wasn't too concerned with that so what I'm going to do now is uh, we'll put the cover on and if it all works and everything works well then uh, what I'll do is I'll solder the wires on and show you how it works when it's all completed and we'll uh, move out back a little bit show you when it's all completed how it works and I'll, I'll even give you the, the exact part number that I used and uh, if you're willing to give it a shot that really doesn't take that much more to put it in all you have to do is take the front cover off and file that uh, the very top and bottom on this side and this side ever so slightly and it pushed right in and then of course solder the wires on so without further ado I'm going to try and put that together and we'll see what happens okay so the uh, switch the cover went on with no modifications to this whatsoever. It's really nice. Again, it, it might be off by 
oh, a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch in here that it sticks through, doesn't doesn't come flush. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. But again, you're never, you know, unless you're looking to restore it to original. I don't think that'll bother anybody. One thing I did do in here, which I may go up and change, which would give me a little bit more depth in there. If you can look in here, you can see there is a little bit of a gap. Oh, maybe 30 thousandths of an inch. So what I did was I put a washer up here behind this one uh, bolt just to uh, take up any play. And then it snugs down and gently makes its way back. I don't think that's going to make any difference once it gets into the case. And that's why I put the washer there so it didn't bend the plate at all. Again, like I said, just in case somebody wants to put it back to original. But I think if you were going to do it, you could always take the actual faceplate off the switch. It comes off real easy. And uh, maybe even follow it down, make it half the size it is. But, but anyhow, like I said, that's the actual switch that I got. See if I don't know how this is going to turn out on camera. Uh, the 2VLR2. Uh, and let me see if I can get a better look at that. I don't know what I did with my mouse. Sorry about the it's moving the camera there. I'm trying to do this so I can show you more stuff. Uh, it was a Power First is actually was the manufacturer of it. I looked it up. It looks like they were going for about $15. This, this guy here had one, uh, and I bought it. Quick shipping and everything. So, uh, that's the switch you'd want to look for and use. It's, uh, as you can see, it's double pull. We're, we're get it to zoom back in now. There we go. It's a double pull. And it's a single throw. Come on, it doesn't want to focus on, I don't know why. Come back out. There you go, now you can see it. Okay, so now I'm going to put it, finish putting it back together. We'll turn it on, make sure it works, and then I'll post this video. So anybody who wants, wants to upgrade, uh, at least they'll know what to, where to start. I'm sure there's other options out there. Thanks. Okay, let's see how it works. I'll stay way back here so I don't get electrocuted. And well, there it goes. Nice, nice, smooth switch flow. Everything seems to be on. I'm getting around to 22, 2300 on the meter, but that's where it's always at. So one thing too, what I'll have to show you is I took the dive. I bought the Harbach fan mod as well. Uh, there is right there, a nice bigger fan. I still wanted to play with the electric fan that I bought, but I wasn't sure uh, what kind of air delivery I get as compared to that. So maybe at some point we can measure that and see where we're at. But the uh, switch seems to work. It feels nice and smooth. So I'll finish putting it together and um, we'll go from there. Let me see. I can get a picture done in here. Let's know if you can see. Oh, well, there it is. Yeah, it looks just like the original. There's the wires soldered to it. It looks just kind of the fit is just like the original. So something maybe somebody wants to do. All right. When I'm done, I'll put it together. And once we get it in the case, we'll take a look at it again and make sure that it doesn't look crazy. And we'll be done with that part. Okay, now back together, and that just about does it, um, as you can see, and if you're questioning the coloring around there, if you haven't seen my earlier video, this is actually one of those stickers that goes over, it's a vinyl faceplate, my faceplate was all ate up, so I put that on, and again, like I said, not worried about keeping it original, just want it to look nice, so there's that, um, and the wondering about that little switch down there I couldn't bring myself to drill a hole in this yet but I wanted to have a standby switch for the uh, amp so when I keyed the mic I didn't have to reach behind it and unplug the uh, 
RCA jack. So what I did was I built this just a little switch here and I just kind of zip tied it to that. I haven't cut the zip tie yet because I haven't, I'm not sure if I like where it's at, but I'll demonstrate how it works. So we'll move the mic over here. Ah, move off my little tobacco containers I use to hold my, all my screws. So there, you can hear there's no, let's see if I key it. Make sure I'm on dummy load there, so I'm not putting anything out. I'm on sideband, so not, nothing's really going to happen. But if I key it, nothing. You'll see when I flip the switch. As you can hear, the relay in the. So now it's now it's ready to transmit. And uh. I just thought it was a lot easier. Sometimes you might want the linear turned on, but don't want to transmit. So all I did was uh, bypass, and I can show you what I did here. Just got this little box for about a buck fifty, and uh, I had to switch. And those two RCA jacks, I got them from an old stereo. Mounted those there, and now one comes out from the the exciter radio and the other one goes to you're going to go upside down to the back right there so nice cheap easy way to do that uh, now I've heard people actually mount a uh, push pull switch to this which that would be a good idea but I think this is something like a hundred K ohm uh, and that's kind of hard to find that with a switch with a push pull so I'll probably have to find two that work and make it from there. But anyhow, that being said, uh, the switch looks like it's okay, and like I said, once it's in the case, there's almost no difference. I mean, I guess if you check it with a micrometer, you might see that it sticks out a little bit more, but no one's ever going to notice just by looking at it. Uh, okay, that's it. Take care. Thanks for watching.